In this video, we discuss some of the reasons why the BBC's TV licensing must be abolished. If you pay your TV license, where do you think the TV license goes? Where does the money go? It doesn't go back into the local community. It goes to uh, keep the bosses in the rich lifestyle that they've come accustomed to over the years through dipping into the pockets of the poor and the working class. They claimed for plane tickets and champagne, parking costs and taxes, on top of basic salaries of £300,000 and upwards. They even claimed for teddy bears. The biggest spender was the Director General, Mark Thompson, who claimed over £19,000 last year. Because it's such a big organisation, often each little part of the BBC gets run as an independent fiefdom almost and they're not really answerable unless something goes horribly wrong and they're in ridiculous situations money wise whereby I mean I mean there's a guy who does, does a, a national radio show and he flies from Belfast to Manchester stays two nights in a hotel to do his show from Manchester just to say look we're doing a show from the regions mm. he might as well just do it from Belfast and bang they've saved at least yeah. 30 grand a year there um, you know if they need a new potted plant for an office they can't just go out and buy a yucca plant for 25 pound or a table lamp for 25 quid. They have this company they go to and they supply one, but we can't charge you less than 150. It's all sort of strange things like that on top of the expenses. Mm. When I was working for BBC Telly for a while, yeah. I never opened my fee envelope uh, yeah. for about three months. I lived entirely off the expenses. In fact, I had money sticking out of every pocket. I didn't know what to do with it. Yes, and well, I that's was not surprised me, Mike. I was threatened by the head of the department that if I didn't up my expenses claim yeah. that I would be removed forthwith. Yeah, I can imagine and that's the right. truth. If your expenses are remarkably low, young man, I said, yeah, well, I haven't done any. He said, well, make some up. He said, what are you trying to do? Kill it for the rest of us. I think uh, the BBC should do what it, whatever it wants to do, but it should pay its own way. If it wants to be a full-on propaganda outlet like, like Sky, uh, that's fine. Uh, but, you know, uh, don't do it at the expense of the public. And promising something you can't deliver in terms of public interest and access to the airwaves. The shocking propaganda campaign by the BBC contained in programmes like Conspiracy Files, Conspiracy Road Trip, which is the most abhorrent, odious bilge that's, that's ever been constructed by a TV company. And I say this as an ex-BBC employee. It's absolutely childish, disgusting, horrible. I can't think of the adjectives. That, that, that is so unscientific, so unfair, such blatant propaganda, that on that alone, you shouldn't pay your TV license. If you have a TV license, why? You are funding your own downfall. It is absolute social suicide. Stop doing it. Stop doing it. In 2009, the BBC sparked outrage with its refusal to air a British charity appeal by the National Disasters Emergency Committee during Israel's attack on Gaza. People will die because of the BBC decision. Let me be clear about that. Two years later, BBC Radio censored the word Palestine live on air when a rap artist tried to say the words Free Palestine. And that is just a sample of many instances where the BBC's management failed to uphold principles of impartiality. While people can complain, their complaints will be heard by the BBC Trust, unlike all other UK broadcasters who have to answer to the British media regulator, Ofcom. And so the British Broadcasting Corporation is funded by the UK taxpayer, but is accountable only to itself. The BBC, which is funded by public opinion, or the public who have that opinion, really ought to wise up because your role as the wartime propaganda mouthpiece yeah, Galloway, is really that's, infuriating that, people that's just the length and breadth of this country. Let's get back to the substance. You're going to lose your license fee over this. Well, you don't have to threaten me. The BBC is not reporting anything that represents the people of this country. Well, I've been thrown out of the BBC and everything just for speaking the truth. The BBC don't like the truth. You're sucking the cock of the establishment and that is it. You are a criminal for not paying your TV licence. I mean that's just bizarre to me. I just don't understand it in the slightest. Alright, well it should be on file anyway. Don't you do it. Do that to me. I'll smack you in the mouth you little git. Understand your rights regarding the TV licence and these TV inspectors that come round and bully uh, single mothers trying to come their way into the house to search the house 
it's illegal, immoral, and it should not happen. And they got all the nasty adverts on the telly, you, you know, they, well they used to, but I think it's more subtle now, but they're the vans come round and the vans pick up, they're sure watching television, we've got the detectors, the detector vans, and they will drag you away, and knock on the door, boom, 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 all heavy duty stuff. You two work for the BBC, I worked for the BBC for 30 years. When I was at the BBC, it promoted the licence fee by saying how wonderful it was, but now, the organisation you work for says, we know where you are. Auntie's put boxing gloves on. Not having a TV license is a criminal offence. Our computer has the address of everyone in the country, so it's only a matter of time before we catch up with you. The BBC have been trying to take me to court for four years. They send me letters saying the occupier. We have not heard from you for some time regarding your TV license. So I just rip them up and put them in the bin. You don't have to let uh, these parasites into your house, uh, just tell them you haven't got a television and don't let them into your house. Yes, there's a TV set on at number five. It's in the front room. And they're watching Columbo. The mystical television van, eh? Ah, detector van. More mystical than the Loch Ness Monster. There are rather a lot of TV detector vans in this area tonight. New, more powerful vans. If you don't have a license, they'll know just where to look for you. The whole thing should be got rid of. It's gross. They're all living on Champagne Charlies. They're worse than the MPs. If you speak up the case of BBC, you're like, ooh, like, ooh, and dissenting voice, ooh, he doesn't want to pay his BBC TV licence. Get the, get the vans round, ooh, take him away, take him away. It says here, this address is listed on our database as being unlicensed. My God, unlicensed for what? I'm not selling liquor. The TV licensing enforcement division has now been scheduled to visit your property. I think that's actually a slight risk when you start accusing people of committing crimes with no proof. Well, you can't do that, can you? Or can you? Watching television programmes as they are being shown on a TV set or any other device is illegal at this address. If an enforcement officer finds you doing so, I love the enforcement officer bit as if they can actually do anything. You're asking me for money for a service that I don't want, so I'm telling you, I don't want your service. Essentially, you know, again, extorting funds to make programmes that people don't want. That's the bottom line. His face was on TVs across Britain for decades, but now that eccentric, jokey figure from years past suddenly seems more sinister. Sir Jimmy Savile, disc jockey, TV personality, fundraiser, and now alleged to have been a predatory child abuser with more than 200 victims, according to the police. The BBC has spent £28 million pounds of taxpayers' money, of licence fee payers' money, on gagging people. What? £28 million pound was paid out to over 500 people to sign special gagging orders. What could the BBC possibly, possibly have to hide? However, I suppose the one thing it does flag up is the tussle within the coalition to lay claim to the raising of the lower income tax threshold because you talk to institutional paedophile rings operating in this me, country me, now. Me. Sorry, I just asked Nick we're going to leave you. I just asked Nick Clegg a question. Just stand aside, please. Norman, we'll, we'll cut across you there, Norman. Uh, apologies for that. Uh, you can see the problem there that uh, Norman Smith was having. We'll try and uh, return to Norman in the next little while. Quack, quack. Oops. The BBC is finished. They knew Jimmy was groping. He wasn't fixing it. They hid Jimmy on purpose. They hid that. They knew that was going on. The alleged victims have accused the organisations he worked for of complicity in the horrific crimes. They include the BBC, a shattering revelation made worse by suggestions of a cover-up after a BBC expose on the affair was axed top BBC bosses failed to explain a decision to drop an earlier special news report on Savile. Now the editor of that news programme has stood aside pending an inquiry. All of us were put in the position of colluding with Jimmy Savile. We who helped him, I appeared on Jim will fix it. 
I went to Esther Ranson's house for a party and we were doing drugs and alcohol in that party when we were kids. She's the head of child life, for God's sake. Shame on that Can woman. Can she be questioned? Shame on that woman. Absolutely. How revolting that the BBC knew this was going on all these years and never done nothing about it. I'd say the real reason that the BBC didn't expose Jimmy was because there's a lot of Jimmys at the BBC. We've had paedophiles working inside the BBC for many years, which of course is what many victims have been telling us. It was BB Scotland that pulled their investigation into the abuse of Holly Gregg. They had already sent emails saying they were convinced she had been abused, and then suddenly BBC Scotland pulled their investigation. We know for a fact that paedophiles have been operating in the BBC, are they still operating and are those the people that are prepared to close down investigations into paedophiles elsewhere? So what, what are you going to do people? You're just going to keep feeding this? You're just going to keep paying your telly licence? You, you're still going to enter their competitions? Do you know what I mean? Because you know what they're doing, they're just nonsense the children. That's all they're doing, they're nonsense children with your money because you're giving them, you're giving them the funds to do the job. Do you know what I mean? It don't make sense to me. Just stop doing it. Don't do it anymore. Just knock it all on the head. Enough's enough. You know what I mean? Please, think about it.